Howdy folks, and welcome back to World of Tanks with the Mighty Jingles. Yes, I've got the whole cosplay and epic con thing out of my system, and it's back to your regular schedule of World of Tanks and World of Warships, and I did actually record this battle just before heading out to Frankfurt for epic con, and I've been itching to get back so I could get this video done and up on YouTube so you can all share in the glory of Orzanel in the Speerpanzer 1C in what is admittedly pretty good matchmaking for this machine, Tier 8 battle on the Arctic map. What do you mean, who's Orzanel? You've never heard of Orzanel. He's a rather good World of Tanks player, and also one of the EU community contributors. In fact, Wargaming are running a special at the moment, where you battle your way up through various different group stages, and at the end of it, you get to fight Orzanel, Sir Foch, and Mr Crow. If you beat them, you win a Tier 8 premium French heavy tank, the AMX CDC, Although it's more likely that they're going to whoop your asses, in which case, well, you win 30 days of premium time. Orzanel's a super unicum player with an overall WN8 rating of just over 3,400 and a 62% win rate. As I'm recording this particular video, he's currently streaming live on Twitch with an audience of just over a thousand. He also has a YouTube channel and a World of Tanks blog. How does he find the time? And you're going to see him play today in this particular replay in his Panzer 1C here in the Arctic map. So, first, super aggressive initial spot. Manages to light up three enemy tanks. Cromwell over there, very, very unwisely, stops in the open to aim at him. As does the Hellcat. Orzanel spanks him for half his health, and then somebody else leaves him on two health. Orzanel, ducking and diving behind the rock, takes a hit from a Cromwell B up to the north, ducks in behind the rock, tucks himself into that little gap there, more fire, presumably from the Cromwell B, judging by the size of the explosions, peppering the rocks all around him, trying to get over the top, possibly to finish off the Cromwell, but doesn't quite have the engine power to get over there. Reasonably sure that he's no longer spotted, and then starts pumping a couple of shots into the likely camping positions in the bush up there. And that's when the M6 pops up. Now you'll notice he's not using the 90mm autoloader on his Spaupanzer, the Sparepanzer actually has a choice of three 90mm guns. The stock gun has worse penetration, worse aiming time and worse accuracy than the intermediate 90mm gun, but it does have a faster rate of fire and higher DPM. You get 10mm better penetration, 0.02 better accuracy and 0 .03, I think, three seconds faster aiming time with the intermediate gun and I'm pretty sure this is the one he's using. Finally, starts getting some damage done on the T29. Didn't manage to hit the M6 at all. T29 gets taken out. Disappointing start. He's fired a lot of ammunition. He's only scored two hits. One on the Hellcat, one on the T29. Enemy team are down four tanks. His team have only lost one. He's going to have to motor and actually get stuck in. Well, this battle's going to be over before he knows it. Rheinmetall Borzig spotted on the hill up there. Oh, AT7. And there's the Cromwell B who put a shot into him earlier. Puts a shot in his direction. Misses. Then he gets spotted. AT7, not looking at him. Cromwell B, not looking at him. T20 is looking at him. Let's not hang around. Get down into the low ground. Fired a partner shot at the T20. Missed. Still, only scored two damaging hits so far this game. For around about four to five hundred damage in total. But now he's no longer detected. And he starts putting shots into the T20. Whoop, spotted. Careful, careful. Exposing as little of the tank as he possibly can. Difficult target here, front of an AT-7. He switch into the high explosive anti-tank ammunition. And still nothing. Not having a very promising start to this game. Finally, actually manages to hit, I think that was, he aimed for it, I think he managed to hit the commander's hatch on top. But again, he's putting an awful lot of ammunition down range. And he's not actually hitting an awful lot of targets. Hits the T20. A little bit of a waste there. Still firing the high explosive anti-tank ammunition. Doesn't really need it to deal with the T20. But he's anticipating having to put more shots into that AT7, so he keeps the high explosive anti-tank loaded. Not going to stop in the open here in front of a whole bunch of enemy tanks. He's not spotted at the moment, but he probably will be if he takes a shot, which he does. Fires on the move, and surprisingly, didn't hit. And there it is, Sixth Sense goes off. Don't forget, Sixth Sense is not immediate. When you get spotted, three seconds elapse before Sixth Sense lets you know that it's happened. So, doesn't stop, 
Oh, wow, that was unexpected. <laughs> Fired on the move, hit and penetrated the AT-7. Now he's got the side of the Cromwell B that gave him the problems earlier. Put some damage into him, now he's got to make the choice. Cromwell B, AT-7, snipes the commander hatch of the AT-7, gets his first kill. Enemy Cromwell B thinks to himself, screw you guys, I'm going home. They've won this side of the map. The other side of the map, however, is not looking so good. The enemy team have just managed to level the scores, 7-7. Seven, seven. And there is just a Yak Panther and a Scorpion G guarding the back door to the base, and that's a large force of enemy tanks about to make a run for the flag. Osnell thinks to himself, well, we've got five tanks here to deal with the T-20, a one-shot kill Cromwell B, and a Rheimatel Borsig. The Yak Panther and that Scorpion G need some backup. So he heads back to try to interdict that procession of enemy tanks pushing into the base. T-28 prototype. Nice hit. This thing only has 50mm of side armour. Absolutely. In fact, you could probably get away with using a high explosive on that thing. Certainly from the side. Scores two hits on the T-28 prototype. And then the Scorpion G looks like he slammed one into him from the front. Friendly Scorpion G up there holding the back door shut. Very, very dangerous machine. Providing it can remain undetected, unfortunately. The old traditional tank destroyer sniping spot on top of the rocks up there to the right. Completely bare-ass devoid of concealment. And so he's getting shot at. And that's a very, very unhappy situation to be in if you're in a Scorpion G and he's just been killed. And Orzanel saw that one coming and he's already relocating because now they're down 11 tanks. There's only four of them left and they still haven't managed to kill any further enemies. His ammunition situation is not looking great. He switched to the premium ammunition, however, because now he has IS 6s to deal with. So, what happened to those five friendly tanks that he left over at the northern end of the map? They only had three enemy tanks to deal with. Well, those three enemy tanks, the Rheinmetall Borsig, the T-20 and the Cromwell B, are all still alive. They've now been joined by a KV-4, and the five friendlies that went up there to kill those three enemies and win the game by capping are now one solitary, very, very lonely, and probably feeling very sorry for himself, heavy tank number six and I really don't fancy his chances all alone against four enemies. Which effectively means, well, it's pretty much just Orzanel, because that heavy tank number six is not going to survive much longer, not with that lot coming around the corner to spank him for his temerity in daring to get that close to the enemy base. And now he's dead. Orzanel's the last one on his team. That IS-6 had 238 health. This gun does 240 average damage, so of course he rolls low, leaves him on two health. The next shot bounces, this stuff isn't cheap, but he did manage to avoid the return shot from the IS-6 and he has finished him off. And, oh look, it's another IS-6. At the point where Orzanol was the last tank on his team, there were eight enemies. There are now seven, he's finished off one IS-6. As for the tracking shot there, as that guy pulls back, doesn't really have the ammunition to waste just immobilizing this guy. Tries to do some damage with that shot but blows the tracks off on the other side. Enemy T-34 there very helpfully crashes his tank and takes himself out, which means that there are now only six enemies that he has to fight. IS-6 misses him from point blank range. Now he has to keep that IS-6 tracked while doing damage to him at the same time and he's down to his last round of armor piercing ammunition just as the IS-6 takes a hit, unfortunately for no damage, from the enemy Cromwell B, and he's considering hiding behind the IS-6 to use him as cover from the Cromwell B, but his turret was turning just a little bit too quickly. Here comes the Cromwell B, and Orzanel deliberately goes for the ram there, hoping that the ram damage alone would be enough to finish off the Cromwell B. It wasn't, he had to put a shot into him, and the Cromwell B did manage to get a shot into him in return, but he survived. The Cromwell B is dead. He's now alone against only four enemy tanks, half as many as he was alone against when the heavy tank number six died. He does not have a lot of ammunition remaining, however. But where's that T-28 prototype? He was right there. Why did he not come around with the two IS-6s? If he had, Orzanel would almost surely be dead by now. And there's that KV-4 as well. Oh, there he is, and he's almost on full health, and I don't think Orzanel has enough ammunition to kill him. Unless he sets him on fire. That, that would do the trick. Probably gonna have to shoot him again, however. So he does. Is he gonna burn to death? No. 117 health. 240 alpha damage. And it bounces. Bugger. He has two rounds of high explosive anti-tank, two rounds of high explosive 
and he has to kill a KV-4, who is a one-shot kill and should have been dead by now, a Rheinmetall Borsig, a T-20, and a T-28 prototype. His big advantage here, of course, is none of those machines, other than the T-20, have particularly good view range, and he's in a scout tank. Didn't see anything when he popped his arse over the ridge there. No sign of the KV-4. Where the hell did the T-28 prototype go? He was just down there by those rocks. Oh, there he is! Wait for it, wait for it, make this count, make this count. Probably wishes he had the high explosive loaded, but, well, didn't have time to change ammunition. Thankfully, no artillery in this game. Managed to spot the KV-4. KV-4 obviously pre-aiming at this location. Nothing shooting at him from the other side. If the Rheinmetall Borsig was in a position to take a shot, he would have taken the shot. Where's that? There's the T-20! And of course, premium ammunition fails to penetrate the front of the T-20, but the T-20 misses with the 90mm gun. He parks right on his ass, pumps his second last shot of high explosive into him, dodges his second shot, finishes him off with the last round of ammunition, high explosive, straight into the very, very vulnerable... Well, let's face it, the T-20 is vulnerable all over, but particularly vulnerable rear armour of the T-20. There's the KV-4. He could kill him if he had one round of ammunition left, but he's dry. He's got nothing. He's still got to kill a KV-4 and a Rheinmetall Borsig with no ammunition. And that Borsig's on four kills. So, you know, even if he had ammunition, I wouldn't really fancy his chances. The only thing he can realistically do now is cap. But the Borsig was up there, and the Borsig is a very, very, very sneaky tank destroyer. You might have the view range advantage, but if the Borsig is sitting behind a bush, it's invisible. Until it fires. You have 462 health, and it has 480 alpha damage with the 128mm, even more with the 150mm. Oh, there he is. Oh, he's missed. And I do believe he just rammed himself to death. <laughs> <laughs> you couldn't make it up. He might actually be in with a chance here. The KV-4 is not capping yet. If he can get into the cap circle and pray that the KV-4 was actually heading to the friendly cap circle, attempting to get there first, he's got a long way to get back. And, well, he was on fire, so it's likely he may have a damaged engine. Oh. <laughs> Alone against eight enemy tanks. Ran out of ammunition with two enemy tanks left. Now only one enemy tank. And it's not the fastest machine in the world. And he's guaranteed to see him coming before the KV-4 sees him. It's all going to boil down to whether or not the KV-4 was heading for the flag or had already decided to turn around and come back up that long, lonely road down on the corner of Fail at the bottom southeastern end of Arctic. I think it's fairly safe to say Orzanel was sweating bullets at this point. I mean, you can ram a Rheinmetall Borsig and probably come out of it alive. In fact, he did. But you don't go ramming KV-4s in light tanks. KV-4s do not get rammed, regardless of the speed of the tanks involved. KV-4s do the ramming. I've seen an E-75 ram a KV-4 and regret it. <laughs> so all Orzanel can do at this point is bend over, grab his ankles, and prepare to kiss his ass goodbye. Two minutes remaining. Oh, he's starting to sweat. <laughs> There's a little bit of lower ground just down there. It doesn't provide that much in the way of concealment, but it means that the KV-4, if he's coming up that back road, just has to come that little bit further before he gets eyes on, and he's only gone and done it. Get a load of this. A Mark of Mastery, Ace Tanker, Kolobanov's Medal, stood alone against four or more enemy tanks. There were eight of them, and one. High Caliber, Invader, Top Gun, and Kamikaze for surviving the Ram and killing the Rheinmetall Borsig. Over 5,000 damage done and more than 2,000 base experience. It's a bit of a bummer for the Rheinmetall Borsig on the enemy team. He did over 5,000 damage of his own and had the chance to be the hero and get the killing blow, but choked at the last second and, <laughs> and ended up giving Orzanella Kamikaze medal. 
But, well, there can be only one, and it wasn't him. Orzanel was the winner, although not when it came to earning money. He fired 15 rounds of premium ammunition in that game, as well as 25 rounds of armour-piercing and all of his high explosive, and his ammunition resupply costs in this match meant that he actually lost money on a 2,000 base experience, 5,000 damage game. Ah, what the hell, it's only money. If you think your heart can take any more, and you want to see more of that kind of action, then Orzanel, as well as running a World of Tanks blog, and having a World of Tanks YouTube channel, is also a very prolific World of Tanks live streamer. You can find all of those links down below in the video description. That's it for today, folks. Hope you enjoyed it. Take care, and as always, I'll catch you next time.